I would like to share with you a story. In my mid-twenties, my wildest dream was to go to the North and the South Pole. It was burning in my heart. I wanted to go and explore the coldest and the furthest regions of this earth. And I didn't have money. I just took leap of faith after leap, after leap of faith, working my way to get to, to Antarctica and to the Arctic. And I've seen miracles. I did not know God back then. I didn't know Jesus Christ, but I knew that I was experiencing something beyond and above my, uh, my powers to control. I had no control over the situations, but I've seen with my own eyes miracles. I've seen how everything fell into place in the least expected ways for what was on my heart for me of to, to come into reality. So after I came from these two expeditions, I was back in, in my house and I was thinking, I can do anything I want. I am free to do whatever I want. So my next idea, my insane idea was I'm going to go to Peru to spend time in the jungle with the shamans. Now, bear in mind, this was before I met Jesus Christ. I was completely lost. I was completely searching for something. So I didn't know what I was doing. So again, I figured, well, I can do anything I want. If Antarctica, the North Pole happened, anything is possible. So I started building a project to go to Peru to fundraise. I was working with the, with the embassies, with the high level uh, uh, politicians and people to get this project happening for me to get the funding to go there. And I had lined up almost everything. And in one day, one day, a few weeks before I was, I was, I was planning to, to leave for Peru, everything completely stopped. People disappeared. Nobody answered my emails. The funding dropped everything completely shut. And I had no idea what was going on. Now, the very next day, um, one of a person I didn't know simply wrote on my blog saying, uh, can we have a cup of coffee? And I said, sure. And uh, I didn't know this person. So I just said, yes, okay. And uh, we, had, we, we met for coffee in town. And out of the blue, she started saying to me, oh, by the way, I just came back from Peru. I was in the jungle with the shamans. And I was, I was on, on the inside, as she was speaking, I was getting so angry and so envious because this person actually could afford to go and do what I wanted to do, but I can't because everything failed. And as she was saying, I could feel the, 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 each, the envy rising up on the inside of me. But at one point she said, we've been there in the jungle and what happened next was completely terrifying because I thought I'm going there on a retreat and what happened um, we were two girls in the group one girl she slept she was supposed to sleep in the jungle in uh, in this fancy bed under the stars and do her meditations and i was supposed to be in my room and what happened to me was so terrifying because as i went to to sleep i could i i began to see demons coming through the windows in my room I was, I was completely in dread, terrified all night long. I could see these hideous figures by the side of the bed. They couldn't reach me for some reason, but they were trying to, 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 to bite me, to come at me with all their hideous strength. And I barely survived the night. I was in dread. I was in terror. But as this was happening, I, I didn't uh, close my eyes for a minute the whole night. I could feel the presence of an angel behind me, so that's why they couldn't come and reach me, because I would have probably died if if that happened. She was in so much dread. Now, when when she uh, when morning came, she met her friend, and her friend said I was too terrified to be in the jungle, so I came to the room. They packed up their luggage, their suitcases, and they ran for their lives. And when they ran out of this um, uh, this retreat center, the shaman came after them, threatening them, cursing them, promising revenge against them because they dared to escape from, uh, from, from that place. And as they were running, they found that the bed in the jungle that the lady was supposed to sleep in had been chopped down with machetes. So somebody actually tried to murder her during the night. So in that place, 
God took care of them. Eventually they escaped and, uh, and they flew back to, to Europe, back home. And she said to me, right now I'm not interested in, I've seen what it means to, to be in the jungle with the shamans, I've seen the demonic coming after me, now I'm just sitting in church at the feet of Jesus Christ. I had no understanding back then what this means. And, um, and suddenly I realized as she was talking that when my project failed, as I was envious against, you know, against something that I desperately wanted, I realized I would not have survived that experience. Probably if, if I would have gone to Peru in the, in the jungle with the shamans, I would have probably died in dread or in, in terror. And only later, when I met Jesus Christ, where, where he became my savior and my Lord, I, this, this encounter, this uh, event came to my mind. And the Lord said, even before you knew me, I took care of you. Even before you knew me, I took care of you. So whenever you are in apparently difficult circumstances, when you're trying to do something and everything fails, don't despise, don't get angry because you do not know. A lot of time you do not know what is happening. You have no idea what's, what's behind the scenes, what's in the heart of people. Remember that Jesus Christ is he, do, is he is the one who searches minds and hearts. He is the one who protects you. So if suddenly all circumstances seem to crash, seem to disappear, don't despise it because you have no idea what the Lord has has freed you from or has he has protected you from. So this is a personal story that uh, I would like to share with you. Oh, but if you go in the Bible, there's there's a beautiful story of David. As he was running away, um, King Saul was chasing him with his armies. And at one point, David is on one side of a mountain and Saul is on the other side of a mountain, of the same mountain with his armies. And David was desperate because he was very close to to being killed to being captured and to being killed he said uh, there is one step between me and death and as the king's armies gathered uh, around him surrounded him the bible says and then a message came to king saul saying that some other army is is uh, attacking his hometown so then the king took his, his soldiers and ran away, leaving David alone. And the Bible says, and after this, they called that place the Rock of Escape. The Rock of Escape. Now, you know that Jesus Christ is the rock upon which everything has to be built. He is the rock the foundation upon which your life and everything else is being built. And we know him as Lord, we know him as healer, we know him as savior, we know him as deliverer, we know him as the provider, the lover of men's souls, but he is also the rock of escape. So whenever you are in serious trouble, some random thing will happen. Some some minor thing that you will have no idea what happened. It seems like a coincidence. It seems like why now or how come? But he is, Jesus Christ is the rock of escape. He is the rock of escape and he will save you from difficult circumstances. So when you're marching on your way to with your life, fulfilling your dreams, fulfilling God's plans and purposes for your life. If there comes a time when you deviate, when you are in danger and things just fall apart for no reason, just thank God because Jesus Christ is the rock of escape and you have no idea what he actually saved you and protected you from.